Well, the transfer is here in AVN, Las Vegas. And, you know, I'm running into a guy that I admire a lot, Mr. Pete. And the reason why I admire this guy a lot is because he's very enthusiastic in all you do. First of all, I want to ask you, man, how are you enjoying Las Vegas right now? Oh, man, I'm from Las Vegas, so I'm back home. So I get to visit the family and I get to work at the same time. I get to meet the fans. It's fun. Now, in terms of meeting the fans, I, I've been asking performers this all around since I've been here. What's it like from the town's perspective when you do get a chance to meet the fans, whether it's here at AVN or other conventions you do? I mean, is it a little bit humbling? Is it more a little bit overwhelming at times when you get the interaction? I mean, it's a, a little bit of both, you know? It, it's, it, for me, I'm always a humble person. Uh, I never even knew my porn career would take off as big as it did, so that, I guess I'm real humble. Um, but at the same time, it can be overwhelming, you know? I want to hear everybody's feedback, but... Sometimes in certain situations, there'll be a flock of people swarming you, asking you stuff, touching, uh, touching stuff or touching you. And it's just hard to juggle all that, you know what I mean? So in that aspect, it could be overwhelming, but well worth it. I would say. No, definitely well worth it. I mean, when it comes to being a performer out there, I mean, a, a lot of, a lot of, you know, getting your name out there and branding yourself is all about social media. As everybody knows, everybody's using that tool. So how do you yourself use that tool? Because I would like to take it from, when I talk to female performers, it's either one thing. They started cam modeling, they started dancing, stuff like that. From a male performer's perspective, how do you go out and use social media to brand yourself? Um, you know, you're asking, you're, you may be barking up the wrong tree on this one. Because I, I do promote myself on social media, but I don't use the tools a, a, as the, the newer young guys do. I've been doing it for 18 years, so I'm stuck in my old-fashioned ways, and I could be better on social media in marketing myself, because that is, that is how everybody's successful these days. So, uh, yeah, I could take notes from some of the younger guys on that shit. Well, in all respects, sometimes people could say old school is cool anyway. I mean, we're the, we're the High Spot Podcast. We cover professional wrestling. I don't oh, know if that's something that you, you watch or have come time. across. I was big-time wrestling fan for many, many years. I'd say the last five, six years I don't watch, but, yeah, I'm oh, a wrestling who? historian, I would say. Oh, well, who's, your, who's your wrestling guy? Uh, it was always Ric Flair. I like Dusty Rhodes, though, too. Can He's I get a woo? Showman. Woo! <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I loved Ric Flair, I mean, coming up. Uh, Sting? Sting was like a close... Say yeah, what? Crow Sting or Surfer Sting? No, Surfer Sting, Venice Beach, oh California. My God. The know, little blonde ponytail. Yeah. Everybody says Crow Sting. You're probably the first guy really? said that likes Surfer Sting oh. and that theme music. There's a man called Sting. Like that's a classic theme song. Right. Oh my I, God. Yeah, I like the young Sting. So where are you? A WWE guy or WCW guy? Uh, I would say WCW. Oh wow. But I was into WWE too. You know. Uh, you know what was crazy? I was going to ask you something about wrestling. Sure. Do you remember the Blade Runners? Of course the Blade Runners. Jim Hellwing, Ultimate Warrior, and Sting formed that tag team of the Legion of Doom. And it's funny how things are, right? Because when they had separated, they had separated so long, Sting finally comes back to the, finally comes to the WWE, Warrior does an amazing Hall of Fame speech. You would hope that maybe they would do business in the future, then be in the same ring together, and Warrior unfortunately passes away. So it's right. funny how it all comes full circle, doesn't it? That's pretty crazy, right? Uh, yeah, I would have loved to see them as a tag team for many, many more years, but, you know, they divided and conquered. They, they, they did, especially in the world of professional wrestling, much like the adult film industry, it's, it's kind of divide and conquer. I mean, I use a comparison sometimes because as competitive as it is in wrestling, especially during the Monday Night Wars, it could be competitive in this business as well, in any business. So in terms of that, how do you stay ahead of everything to make sure that you necessarily, for example, you're obviously going to focus on yourself, but how do you make sure that you kind of ignore everything else that's going around you so you can stay focused and stay on top and stay relevant? I mean, I just keep plugging away. You know, it's hard. Uh, you got to be diversified, you know. You got to see the writing on the wall. You got to adjust to your situations and habitats. And that's the key to being successful. And keep the, the young people around. Like, I feel like a lot of the older performers, when young guys come around, they feel like it's competition. No, it's evolution, you know. Like even, you know, we could go to the music world. Uh, there are some rappers that have been around forever because I follow hip hop. And uh, the ways they stay relevant is they, they add these new and up and coming artists to their, to their albums, you know. So Jay-Z is now working with all the Uzi Vert and this and that person, yeah. the new artist. Um, and so I think in my movies, I have to use some of the up and coming like new guys. That'll keep me relevant with the with the new audience because you got to understand there's new porn fans every year. Every year somebody turns 18, they get, it's legal for them to do what it, what the heck they want. A lot of people get into porn when they're bored. Very true.
true. Yeah. And, and thank you so much, Miss, Mr. Pete, here, and, and I appreciate your time. One final thing, what do you do to unwind when you're not necessarily being booked to do things? What do you do to kind of relax when you're here in Vegas? Uh, I'm going to have a few drinks. I'm going to hit the... Uh, I like playing the, the uh, poker, but what do you call that? Like the digital poker? Electronic poker? Electronic poker, yeah. I do that, and then I'm going to smoke some weed because it's legal out here now. It's true, it's true. But thank you so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. But I, I would not, I'd be remiss to say this. Since you're here, I want to invite you into a special group. It's called the Jersey Rank Crew. And the easiest way to be a part of that, especially since we're here in Vegas, and God damn it, you got to go big in Vegas. Put these two fingers up like this. Two sweet. One sweet. He's now part of the Jersey Red Crew. Me and we'll be behind you. We'll follow you and we'll support what you do, my friend. Thank you so much, man. Mr. Pete, ladies and gentlemen.